Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. When we are more proactive, when we are emphatic about communicating Islam in the right way, we stand up stronger. We stand up stronger, but when we are silent, when we are passive, when we are negative, we are sending a very negative message. And we have to understand that people communicate differently. In the East, where most of us come from, our cultures come from, passivity is respected. Silence is something that is admired. Compliance is a good trait because it communicates respect. But in the West, you have to realize that if you are not emphatic and assertive, if you do not speak up about who you are and may identify yourself clearly and proactively, you are sending a ne negative message. Communication is different from culture to culture, from country to country. When you are passive and silent and you mind your own business in the light of the negative image about Islam in the media, you will be confirming that negative message. You have to come out of your way and can communicate to people what Islam really is. But you can't do that truthfully and genuinely unless you embrace it in your heart. You can't act Islam. You can't do a show about Islam. If it's not in your heart, if you don't embody it in your person, in your house, in your family, in all your dealings, you cannot make a show of it. People will see through that kind of fake approach to Islam. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa salam, wa ba'd. In the name of Allah, and may the peace of Allah be upon his last messenger as to what follows. Family, friends, foes, and foettes. <laughs> Welcome back to the features. I greet you all with no hatred in my heart, just love and serenity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon all of you. So before you continue, please subscribe. Please like, please share, please hit me up on Patreon. As you know, we get a lot of haters up in here. So, with this particular video, it's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be tackling an issue which causes indirectly a lot of division, you could say, within the Muslims themselves. And that is color versus culture. Now, a lot of people who have this these type of racist tendencies, if you are if you have a racist tendency, it doesn't necessarily make you a pure racist. You understand? Because human beings are actually complicated. And a lot of times what we have are cultural misunderstandings. As we saw the brother Mu'tazim, as he eloquently explained, that pacifism in the East is looked at as something is honorable, but you can't be a pacifist in the West because it's something that essentially means that you are excluding yourself from the typical Western type culture. And there are a lot of misunderstandings that happen with just this one thing. So human beings might have some racist tendencies without actually knowing it's a racist tendency because they don't understand the culture. So how do we distinguish, distinguish rather, between uh, like a pure racist or being racist in that exact moment? It's the reaction to being informed that that action that you did is actually racist. So if you find people doubling down, tripling down on racist behavior, you can now say that person, yes, he's a racist as opposed to being racist in the moment. You understand? People, human beings are, they're not just one thing. You know, human beings can be multiple things. For example, you can, for example, be a good father, but you're, you smoke weed, for example. You understand? Does that mean you're a bad person? It means you have... A bad habit but it doesn't necessarily make you a bad person you see likewise you can have a racist tendency without actually being a pure racist but you're being racist in that moment that particular moment so how you fix that will determine whether or not you are truly a racist or not so I'm gonna give some specific examples so that people can learn where these cultural misunderstandings happen or cultural insensitivities happen in, in real life. I'm going to give uh, four real life examples, inshallah. 
and I'm gonna start with myself. <laughs> So before I continue, I would like you guys to first watch the definition of racism video that I posted and have a look at that because we have to define racism first before we can determine whether somebody is having a cultural insensitivity or somebody is being racist in the moment or somebody is actually out like a racist racist, like a white supremacist, hardcore racist, right? <laughs> okay, so watch that video. And before I continue, I'm just going to quickly define racism so that we can continue, right? So racism is a belief that race is a fundamental determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race, okay? And another def definition can be defined as the systemic, systemic rather oppression of um, a racial group to the social, economic, or political advantage of another. So always there's going, and when you're dealing with racism, you're talking about one group that has a position of power over another racial group. Do you understand? That's how racism works. That's what racism is. A lot of people confuse prejudice with racism. They're two different things. A pre prejudice, bigotry, these are, these are different from actual racism. So now that we defined racism, <laughs> okay, right? Now let's get into what I wanted to talk about, right? How do we know if somebody's culturally confused or somebody is actually having a racist moment or purely racist, right? So we're gonna give real life examples from the Muslim community. We're gonna start with me first. So a while back, a couple of months ago, uh, the brother Daniel Hakikachu, he did the video, right, of Omar Suleiman, right, doing the pagan ritual uh, thing, right? And we all saw it. And first of all, I want to be clear that yes, uh, Omar Suleiman, he did um, actually participate in a pagan ritual, okay? However, the point is, why did he do it? You understand? So when I saw it as a black person uh, growing up and who has always lived in the West for my entire life, like I'm a foundational black, you know, from the diaspora, you know, as a black person, any black or brown person will look at that and instantly know that this is a pagan ritual. However, most people who are not from the West, they won't have a clue, right? I didn't know that <laughs> until I started me reading comments or making comments. So I left a comment on Daniel Hikikichu's video and unfortunately I tried to find the comment and it's I couldn't find it. I don't know if it got deleted, but I would not be surprised. <laughs> I suspect that this uh, comment thread was deleted because it was fairly popular. It had a lot of likes on it, a few hundred likes, and it was a long thread. And I was having a mini debate with a sister. And she said that the brother, Omar Suleiman, he made Tauba for it. And I believed it. And I believe it. That's what she's saying, right? So in my mind, I'm like, I'm I'm thinking, like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? Omar Suleiman made Tauba for this. How can he not know that this is a you know, a pagan ritual. How can you not know? And then I started seeing, you know, people's comments and everything like that. She herself said that she didn't know it was a pagan ritual. And I saw one of these uh, YouTube, um, YouTube Dai people, I'm not gonna say his name because I don't <laughs> wanna promote that particular channel, but he said that he thought that this was just, you know, pour some for the homies, you know, pour, pour some for the homies. Right? That's what he thought it was. Right? So I'm watching him saying, you know, this. I, he thought that it was pour something from the homies. He didn't know it was a pagan ritual. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. The libation. Right? It is pouring some for the homies. And every black person knows this. And a uh, brown person. It's the same thing. So we understand from our culture that this is actually a pagan ritual. Because we know this. Oh, we've seen our families do it, our friends do it, 
You know what I mean? We grew up with this and it's even deeply ingrained in our culture. You'll have rap songs talking about pour something on the floor for, for the homie or whatever, right? It's in, um, you know, sh television shows and movies and whatnot. So we know what it is. So after watching some of these, these videos and reading comments, I realized that what we're having here is a cultural misunderstanding. And that's why Omar Suleiman did not know that this wasn't some symbolic thing. It was actually a pagan ritual. He didn't know. But us in the black and the brown community, we know. We know exactly what that is. So I told this sister, there's no possible way. <laughs> it's, like, it's impossible. How can you live in the West and not know that this, excuse me, is a pagan ritual? Then I realized that after reading the comments and people defending Umar Salah, that a lot of people did not know that this was a pagan ritual. They didn't know the name of it. it most people, even a lot of black people don't know the name of it, but we know what it is, just the action, because it's deeply ingrained in our culture. And because it's not from Umar Suleiman's culture, he did not know what it was. So I have to refute myself for that statement, that there's no way that Omar Suleiman couldn't have known that, right? I have to retract that statement because now that I've seen the big picture, it's very likely that he didn't know. And just because we know, us black and brown people, that does not mean that everybody knows. It's just something that we're used to in our culture and it, be, it will be foreign to other people's cultures you understand this is a cultural misunderstanding so i am refuting myself i am re <laughs> I'm retracting my statement that uh there's no way that omo Suleiman did not know that uh this was a pagan ritual i have to retract that and i ask you know, Allah to forgive me because I have to answer for myself. I can't answer for anybody else and what they're doing. You know, when you make a mistake publicly, you should retract publicly. And I'm retracting publicly now, right? So let's go on and move on to situation number two. So Ayan Lemon James asked Sheikh Asim Al Hakim, uh, is it permissible to have the wave haircut without the fade? And I want you to notice that Ahmar Saeed is asking what's a fade. Sheikh Asim al Hakim proceeds to answer this seems to be a bit gayish. However, if it is not imitating the disbelievers, this seems permissible. So, a couple of things to unpack here. First, I want to address the questioner. I believe it's a sister, his name is Ayan. And this pretty much goes to all Muslims as well, especially those who are just starting to learn and whatnot. And that is the act of questioning in Islam is something that should be taken seriously. Uh, what do you mean? It means that you don't ask any question that comes to your mind in Islam. And you just don't ask anybody. And there's lots of proofs for this, lots of evidences for this. You know, you can look, for example, at the hadith of the man who killed 99 men, uh, the hadith of Jibreel, right? But at any rate, the point is, is that when you're asking a question to somebody, that person should have knowledge of the thing that you're asking about before you go and ask them a question. For example, I don't go to a mechanic to ask medical questions. I'm going to go to the doctor if I want a question answered about medicine. So the questioner should know the type of questions that they're asking. Not every question is for everybody. And this type of question should not be asked to somebody like uh, Sheikh Asim Hakim because he is not familiar with uh, black Western culture. This question should be asked to a black 
Westerner, <laughs> right? People like, for example, Mufti Munir or Tahir Wyatt or, or Sheikh Abu Osama or whoever. Uh, you know, somebody who's familiar with black Western culture should be asked that question. You understand? So it's not fair to ask Sheikh uh, Asim Hakim the question. And the other part of that is that Sheikh Asim Hakim, he shouldn't be answering such questions if he doesn't know. And you could tell by the answer that he didn't know because he's basically assuming making assumptions in the question first first assumption of course is the gayish what and we'll deal with that in a, in a second part but the second thing that he said is that um you know as long as it's not imitating the kufar well how how are you asking a question like that if you don't know if you don't know if it's imitation of kufar or not a westerner will know that but if you don't know then how are you answering the question why can't you pass the question off to somebody who's more familiar with black culture instead of trying to answer it yourself. And to the statement that he made, that gayish comment, that is culturally insensitive. What do you mean? For example, the last time I wore a thobe to Juma, and this is true, okay? These young white girls started laughing at me. And you know why they were laughing at me? Because they didn't see a thobe. What they saw was a dress. Because in Western cultural context, a thobe is gayish. You see these two dudes here demonstrating how to do an Arab nose kiss? That's gayish. These two Arab guys walking down the street holding hands? That's gayish. These two doing the, I don't know what you call it, but whatever you call that dance, that's gayish. These dudes right here twerking and backing that thing up against each other, that's gayish. So some of the Arab brothers right now are be, you know, angry. And they're like, Bilal, why are you calling my culture gayish? Exactly. You see that feeling you're feeling right now? You see that feeling you're feeling right now? Imagine existence like that all the time. Because of Muslim brotherhood. Yes, us black converts deal with this all the time. I'm sure Africans deal with it all the time as well. So this is what you call cultural insensitivity. And what I don't want to happen is a bunch of black brothers going on uh, Sheikh Asana Hakim's Twitter feed and bombarding it with, you know, why you do this, why that. The only thing that should happen the Shay, he, he didn't know, right? So we have to be better than that. He should at least bare minimum delete that tweet or apologize or both. But again, this is something that is clearly a cultural, there's a cultural gap here. And these type of things can and oftentimes are misconstrued for racism. So we have to be a lot more sensitive to people's cultural identities. A lot of these problems stem from the lack of asking the right questions. You know, when I deal with people from the East, many times they are very insensitive, insensitive to the struggle of black people. And they just interject and put their own two cents in of things they have no clue about. They just got here. And this will easily be misconstrued for racism. I don't know how it is in your countries, but over here, you don't just assume things and then put your own two cents in thinking that you know what you're talking about and you don't. So at any rate, this is the first video. Inshallah, I'll, I'll do the second video tomorrow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit me up in Patreon. I came to you in peace. I leave you all in peace. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.